your attention. Uh, we're going to begin. Okay. And of course, uh, we can't hold anything until we have a quorum. Uh, but we're expecting a couple of other people to be here anyways. I'd like to uh, welcome you to our July 25th meeting of our Tricentennial Committee as we plan and prepare uh, for the year 2025. And again, I say to our guests, it sounds like it's a long ways off, but uh, it moves pretty fast, and we're going to try to do what we can. We've been need having extra meetings during the summer in order to uh, kind of stay alive and active. I'd like to start off by thanking uh, Jeanette for uh, hosting our meeting here at the uh, Bank of Easton. It's been absolutely terrific. And of course, we've had steak uh, at all of our meals. This is the only one, <laughs> only kid. <laughs> but uh, I'd also like to uh, thank uh, ECAD, Easton Community Access Television, for sharing our meetings uh, with the uh, audience out here in the Easton community, how important that is. We usually start off by uh, doing introductions. So I'm going to call the meeting to order as uh, Mike Good has arrived. Thank you, Mike. And uh, I'm Dave Clifton, uh, the chair of the committee, and I'm very honored to be able to do so. I'd like to go around the table and uh, I'll introduce the guests, but I'd like to have the committee members uh, tell us who you are and what role you actually have on our committee. And I'll start with our select board member. Uh, Mark Lamb, select board member, uh, representation for the select board. Um, Michael Good, uh, marketing and social media. Ken Michael, advisory. Courtney Pupkin, fundraising. Jeanette Kamara, treasurer. And I'll introduce the guests. I'm going to start with our new secretary, Diane Lasati. Uh, she uh, has worked at the polls, been active over the years, and is familiar with the town clerk's office. And uh, a long time uh, family here in the town of Easton. And Rosalind Miller is going to be the assistant secretary because we want to take the workload uh, off the, uh, the secretary. They're both neighbors, they know, know each other, they sit beside each other, and of course, they're both active uh, at the polls here in the town of Easton, and we appreciate you folks uh, stepping up to enjoy us. They also happen to be neighbors of mine, so it sounds funny uh, introducing them. Uh, we also have uh, uh, a fellow who's uh, been very active at Portland State Park, He's with the Department of Conservation and Recreation. He participated in their 100th anniversary. And I like him because he has lots of creativity. And I think you'll find that out as, as we have our meetings. But uh, his name is Paul Clifford. And Paul, we thank you very much. Uh, and we're looking forward to uh, having Boylan State Park participate in our celebration. Uh, Dale Thistle's already been in touch with us regarding uh, the uh, tricentennial car show. He's even selected a date on October 4th. And uh, one of the things, that, a couple of things we wanted to uh, present to you, I know this is your first meeting, but uh, we'd like to see if we can have the possibility of getting a parking fee waived uh, during that tricentennial event. Uh, because of the year that it is. We also, uh, many uh, residents uh, enjoyed that uh, Blanche Ames production that you narrated. It might be something you might want to consider uh, during that uh, celebration year. Any thoughts, anything you'd like to share with uh, our group? Nothing yet, but I'm excited to work with you guys. Yeah. Wonderful. We also have another guest, he's a photographer. Didn't bring his camera this evening. <laughs> his name is Chris uh, Ventresco. You probably remember his dad, who's been active in the town over the years. But uh, Chris has decided that he'd like to join our group. Uh, this is his first meeting. 
We certainly need a photographer. I'm going to find out from Chris whether or not we need more than one photographer. When you take a look at the uh, anniversary books, uh, photos of all of the uh, town uh, department heads, uh, board of select, and the list goes on and on. The very first photo I'd like to have you take is uh, a photo of the uh, committee. Uh, there's one on the uh, web page, but it doesn't have everybody in it. And I wanted to make sure that we have one. And we'll do it at a meeting uh, as I touch base with the committee. Give the, uh, the men an opportunity to do their hairs up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the photo. Don't forget to make it. <laughs> so uh, I'll be in touch with you on that, Chris. And yeah, then uh, I have a couple of books I'd like to share with you to give you an idea. And at some point in time, I hope that we have an anniversary uh, book that we're going to put together at the end of the celebration. And that's where a lot of the photos are going to go. And of course, we're going to share it on uh, everything from newspapers to what have you uh, to make sure the word gets around. So again, I, I welcome you folks, and I thank you so much for sharing your time and your talent uh, to be part of the celebration committee. Uh, Michelle McGee is not able to be here this evening because she's on a trip, but uh, she uh, stays in touch quite often. It's almost like she didn't go on the trip, but uh, she probably hates to miss a meeting. But uh, that happens to all of us at some point in time. And I hope that by this time, everybody that's on the committee has had a chance to uh, to get sworn in uh, at town hall, so that's good. good. So uh, why don't we begin our meeting. I'd like to start off by uh, mentioning our meeting schedule. Our next meeting is going to be August 9th. It's going to be here at the Bank of Easton. It'll be a 6 p.m. start. The final meeting of the summer season will be on August 22nd. Now that meeting, uh, of course, will start at 6 as well. Starting in September, uh, we'll go back uh, to uh, our house. We used to meet at 6.30. Mm -hmm. It's now going to be 6 p.m. and we'll be meeting once a month beginning in September. And uh, I would suggest to our board that uh, if something important comes up or we have to have an additional meeting, uh, the chair will share that with the vice chair and the rest of the uh, board so that we can make a decision to uh, stay on top of things as we uh, plan and prepare. David, you referred to house. What do you mean? Queensley said house. Queensley house. Oh, Queensley. Oh, okay, cool. I, I forgot that the guests may not be aware of that. Um, I would like to mention uh, to our committee, and I'm going to take my seat. I stood up tonight because I wanted to show off my shirt to the camera. I'm <laughs> only kidding. But uh, we do need a chair for the block party. We need a chair uh, for the Business Relations uh, Committee. And I've been talking, uh, and I didn't get a chance to finish our conversation, Ken. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to it by a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, and there are priorities and, and families on that list as well. I did want to say, Ken, that uh, because of your professional background, a couple of us were saying that uh, we get an ideal person on our committee, Ken Michael, who really uh, <laughs> going to get you notebooks. <laughs> would be the guy to handle businesses in town. Okay, I'll do <laughs> enough. <laughs> it might uh, involve sending out a letter. It might involve uh, meeting with a few of us just to. Uh, give you some support and help in that area. But we'd like to know uh, what the businesses are and uh, how we can get them involved, uh, either by sponsoring or uh, donating. Uh, they may open up their restaurants at certain events that we might have. And I think that would be terrific. And I hope, Ken, that you'll accept that. I think I just did. Responsibility. I just did a minute ago. But okay. Okay. <laughs> Very good. What's, uh, the what's the official? And what I thought we would do is uh, rather than throw the event uh, uh, committee at you, 
that uh, Michelle is working with the uh, coordinators of all the events. She's already doing that. So why don't we let her continue to do that? And I'll handle the advisory part, Ken, so you can concentrate on the historical part as well as uh, the businesses. So uh, that's terrific. Uh, that's another uh, slot that's filled. Um, the anniversary book committee, I, I already mentioned that. And as I was going through what I was doing in other towns, that was an important committee. It needs a writer on it, it needs a photographer, it needs uh, people who are involved in the history of the town, and of course, uh, somebody that's involved in the events, because there's so much to cover. I got the anniversary book uh, of not only Easton, but uh, other towns out in the car. I didn't bring it in because it was coming down in buckets when I arrived. Um, I also thought of a gifts committee that Michelle and I talked about. What would that involve? This would involve uh, doing something maybe at the end of our celebration that we can leave with the town. Some towns uh, leave a monetary gift to the town, what's ever left over from the celebration. We need an arts and music festival coordinator and we're gonna get the people up in the community that are involved with the arts. A bonfire coordinator, a merchandise coordinator, a town picnic committee. Uh, Michelle is going to be coordinating that particular event. The anniversary Gala Ball Committee, uh, I'm going to be uh, involved with that. I've run one or two of them in the past, and uh, that's an exciting time for everybody to come together. And that could be uh, four or five hundred people. And we're thinking right now, after speaking to Father John, about the possibility at Stonehill College. And that's one of the uh, places we're looking at. Uh, Michelle suggested a scholarship coordinator and uh, shovels in the shop uh, person and someone to uh, run events to raise money. Now this came up and I know that your category uh, is the uh, chair of our uh, donations and uh, events and I thought that uh, maybe there's a possibility that you could still be in charge of fundraising but we could have two people uh, it was suggested that we have someone who uh, can run events a fundraising event for us to uh, make money towards the celebration. Um, you weren't in favor of doing both, you wanted to just do the one, and that's a big job in itself. Um, so I'd, I'd like to be able to see either we add another person to your group, or maybe you have someone in your group that could handle, um, make uh, a fundraising event type thing. So yeah, any comments on that? I think you still need to find that person. Yeah. Um, but I think there are some candidates um, in line we, um, who are meeting with Michelle and going to determine what they, what role they would like. So there are some potential people out there to fill that. But I would definitely like to work with someone. It's just too, it's just too much for one person to do. Courtney Pupkin is a fundraising yeah. uh, chair, and. Uh, she has uh, got a big responsibility and we're going to get a report from her tonight uh, when we come to that uh, part of the agenda. Oh, I'd like to ask, how many committees are there? Hmm? How many committees are there? Oh, we're not done yet. We've got five more to go. Yeah. It, uh, well, sometimes... I'm joking. I don't know if she's joking. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had that thought at first that we could over-committee ourselves. Uh, to the point where nobody knows who they're reporting to. This is legitimately how many committees are there. I mean, I just counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is nine, ten maybe? I know there's some missing. It's got to be 19. I think so there's the 19. Events, the events individually, my understanding is like the events committee. They have coordinators. Okay. If 
fundraisers, business needs, community relations. Is that also business? Is that the same? Um, we have coordinators of the events. No. So. Coordinators of the events, and then we have uh, separate committee chairs uh, for the committees that we have. Um, we kind of have the same people, and we only have 10 on our board to do everything. And all of a sudden, uh, we now have uh, an anniversary book, and that would involve other people in the community that would come together and, and put that together with representation from our board. That's just an example. But the 19 committees, and I know Michelle and I talked about this. I know Michelle and I just, uh, talked about this, and she uh, came up with some good answers to justify why we have to have. And it involves more people. It can't be the same people doing all these committees. But I think we've reached our peak. I don't think there'll be anybody else. I think you're way past your peak. Yeah, I'm speaking perfectly honest. If you yeah. have 19 committees, that's going to be a problem. I mean, if, if I, if, please, anybody needs to chime in. It makes it unrealistic <laughs> to, mean, to have 19 committees to do. I mean, Dale, I mean, what do you think? Uh, you're on the Lions Club. You mean, you know what it takes to put a. Uh, an event together, if you have 19, 19, I think there's, I don't think there's 19. Uh, we, we typically have a quarter group of people who are doing 90% of the work and things, but yeah, it can be a little cumbersome with too many committees and so forth. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we want to handle some way we're facilitating things that are moving the ball forward. And so we have that committee chair, and that's what we have. Yeah, and I think 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 for the 250th and 275th. Take a look in those books and see if they list the committees in the books, see how many committees there were and what they were. And that way, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I frankly think 19 committees is way too many. Because you're going to have, you know, what, what you're doing is some of the stuff is going to overlap. So if, what you're going to find is, you know, if uh, Courtney's fundraising, and you bring somebody else in who's got experience doing the event, well, you've got that all in one. That's one committee as opposed to two. Right. So you need an event committee, yes, but you're going to have an overlap there. And I think 19 is just way too many. And I think you should, should take a hard look at what's, if it's listed. I don't recall whether or not it's listed. In the I hear what you and Mike are saying, Ken, and maybe we can look at the committees and combine them uh, rather than have all these committees. But uh, yeah, I can you know, I, I had some concern in the beginning of this process as we uh, spread out. Uh, it gets to the point where you're not sure who you're reporting to. In another town that I was involved in, uh, a lot of people reported to this board. They didn't uh, report uh, to other people because then you get to understand that it's this committee here that has the final say. So why don't I do this? I'll get together with Michelle and, and we'll take a look and see uh, which ones can be combined and knock them down. Well, I, and I strongly suggest you look at those booklets and see what's in there, if anything. I don't know, I'll try to look myself, but you know, so, we've got both of them. So right now, so this is this week, so here's what we have listed. We have the sponsorship, fundraising, that's important. And then we have a business, no, we have a fundraising chair meeting. So we can look at the book, but I think that those should be combined, not for according to do all the work. Right. Yeah, so I think we're just, we lump some of the subcommittees or that's, yeah. So we have a sponsorship, marketing, and apparently we're looking for business and fundraising chairs. No, I took the business. So you, we got business. So and industry. Business and industry. Okay. All right. But the fundraising would encompass the event, but you need somebody on the fundraising committee who can handle the event. You don't need two committees for that. Right? That was my suggestion yeah. earlier. Yeah. Now let's do that. Uh, let's put this on the agenda for the next meeting, and we'll uh, take a close look at which ones we can combine and which ones we can look at out. Uh, that's the difference between what I did in the other town and this town, is the fact that uh, most everybody reported to the board rather than uh, go to two committees before you get to the, the committee that makes the final decision. 
Let's move on on our, our agenda. Uh, I did send everybody a copy of the agenda. I sent everyone a copy of the signature events. And then I sent you a copy of uh, a bunch of committees that we look forward to uh, involving in our celebration. So let's go to uh, the TV show I was going to mention uh, is scheduled on August 22nd. The plan was for, for us to do this once a month. And uh, the whole purpose is to promote uh, Easton's 300th anniversary. And we're looking forward to getting each and every one of you at some point in time to join us on the show. Uh, Michelle and I opened it up with a half hour show at the uh, ECAT studio. It's scheduled on the 22nd. Uh, I know that uh, we had asked uh, Mike Hood to join us and uh, we were gonna ask Mark uh, as our select board representative, uh, is it possible for you to come to the studio at 4.30 on the 22nd? I will be in New Hampshire at that time. Yeah. Maybe the next time. At some point in time, you know, we're gonna be doing this up until 2025, so you'll get an opportunity to do that. Uh, we're gonna start with you. Is there anybody else on the committee that might be free at 4.30? on the 22nd, keep in mind, we're meeting here at six o'clock that same night. Okay, uh, Mike, we'll, uh, we'll have you on the show. There's a half an hour. <laughs> 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 I'll set my schedule. I'll set my schedule. Yeah. That would be good, Ken, if you could join us. Okay. It usually takes, takes me half an hour to introduce myself. But uh, I'll tell you, it's nice to have everybody on the committee. Uh, we're going to reach out into the community and be talking about the celebration. And of course, you can get uh, a podcast of that show as well. So uh, the next item on the agenda Michelle and I are going to be having some meetings in between our meetings. Uh, we have made plans to meet with the uh, Walpole 300th Anniversary Committee to find out some ideas from them on how they handle things. And of course, this celebration is going to be uh, during the year uh, 2024. And I've looked up uh, their minutes and I've read into what they're doing. and. Uh, they seem to be doing the same thing we're doing, only this celebration is a little closer. So I don't think we're too far behind in terms of uh, what we have to do. We also plan on meeting with the Chamber of Commerce. And I know, Chris, you're on that board. Yes. Uh, maybe you could uh, help us make an arrangement so that we can sit down with them and uh, get them involved in the celebration. Well, part of my, on the business side, after you and I talked yesterday, that was exactly my thought to contact yeah. the chamber. So if Chris is on there, I can come yeah. in here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because we're going to need a list of all the businesses. That would yeah. make sense. I can't, I can't remember them all. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of so, yeah. Is there any particular day. time during the day that you may not be available? Kind of? <clears throat> usually I'm not available uh, during the day before 10. I usually do a bunch of calls and stuff like that before 10. But I can work out a time. Okay. Don't, we'll, we'll figure that out. We also uh, intend to walk uh, some possible firework sites and some possible bonfire sites, and we're going to do that with the uh, fire chief. We might even involve, uh, hopefully, the police chief as well. So uh, we'll be doing that, and we'll be able to give you a report at the next meeting, which is August 9th. Um, We also are going to meet with the superintendent at Southeast Regional Vocational High School. Uh, she's excited about uh, wanting to involve uh, the regional school in our celebration. I'm talking about uh, the possibility of making up signs that could save us money. I'm talking about printing costs. Um, 
those uh, will find out. They were a tremendous help to another community that's in there on sodium. Uh, they uh, actually uh, did a lot of printing for us. They printed, they made up signs. The students participated in the process and uh, we saved lots of money. And thank God, here they are in our own backyard, a regional school. So those are the meetings that we'll give you reports on at the next meeting. Uh, right now, I'd like to get some committee reports. The secretary report, I know Lord Diane, you and Rosalind have no report at this time. Do but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Michelle for filling in uh, and between secretaries. She uh, took care of the posting, whether it be the minutes or the agenda. And I know with this job goes a little bit of training, Diane and Rosalind, that uh, we'll go over with you. I know Peter at the clerk's office uh, yeah. will go over a lot of this stuff so you know exactly what has to be done. Treasury report, uh, Jeanette uh, Kamara. I have nothing to report this time. Nice report. <laughs> Very quick. Got a lot of time on it. Uh, we're going to go to our subcommittee reports, and I'm going to start with uh, um, I was going to start with Ken, but Ken and I have already talked about him handling uh, the business uh, uh, part of our celebration, as well as uh, handling uh, the historical part. Uh, community relations, uh, Dale. Yes. So yeah, I haven't really moved the ball forward since our last meeting, and get another commitment to we're, we're trying to keep up with the pace of you guys here. But general ideas, and we've been reaching out to other folks in the community who will help serve, or the, you know, are willing to help out um, for purposes of connecting with the community more generally. So I think I've identified some of those folks in the past, and I would just ask whether it's here or anybody who's watching. If you can contact us, if there's anybody else that you think of would, would be appropriate to help in that regard. And what we're looking to do is to connect with a number of the different community organizations. Obviously, we can't include everybody, but it, it will be somewhat of an open door. Um, and ultimately, what we're going to be leading towards, I think, would be some community forums and so forth where people can get more information and show up and things like that. So we're, we're getting the word out and connecting with the community. And, Having a grassroots effort of getting a lot of different organizations doing things for the 300th anniversary in conjunction with what we're doing. And that's my report. Good. Anybody have any questions of Dale? Okay, we'll move to the uh, fundraising sponsorship for Courtney uh, Popkin. Uh, I got a copy of it uh, earlier. I had a chance to look at it. Quite impressive. Looks like a lot of work. and. Of course, Courtney has lots of experience uh, in this area. Uh, why don't you give a presentation? Everybody has a copy of it in writing. Uh, go ahead, Courtney. Okay, well, for, mo for the committee members, this is our um, probably third time looking at it. But I'll just quickly say, so what we did change, what has been revised, is the fact that we had, I believe it was four opportunities or so, and now we have um, eight twenty-five thousand dollar opportunities. Um, in addition to, and then we also have lower levels starting at fifteen thousand, and that goes all the way down to um, the one hundred dollar pewter level. Um, feedback was requested on um, by me, of course. <laughs> I requested feedback on, of course, any of the items that we. Um, any of the uh, benefits, but if all in addition to that, we try to choose names, um, sponsorship level names that were community related, but not too political, etc. So if there, for any reason you think that something w would cause an uproar, I say to everyone, I'm from Michigan, not gonna, not gonna offend me. Um, you know better than I do. Um, so we, um, we have some additional sponsorship opportunities and that says pending because things just have been really in flux with this committee and we kind of bring things in and take them away. The scholarship drive was an idea of Michelle's for every student at OA in the year 2025 to receive a 
gift, but this was this is also kind of like a surprise. So, and it's hard because we're on camera, and I don't want to mm -hmm. go too far with that. But anyway, um, so there's that's an example, and then the shovels in the shops is like. Um, that was one of her fundraiser ideas under the events that we're, we're going to be finding someone else to take over. And that would be like what they were doing in Chatham um, with the sharks, sharks in the park. Um, but for my portion, <laughs> back to that, it's the big money. Um, and the other reason, speaking of big money, I did want to add, um, sometimes you'll find a bigger level, like a $50,000 level or even a 100000 but I did feel like this leveled the playing field a little better because we do have our major people in town and everyone's used to them being the top one or two or three. And so this just gives everyone an opportunity, or well, everyone, at least, you know, the big, all of the bigger organizations. Uh, an opportunity to really step up and have their name in a, as a premier sponsor. So it won't be as exclusive, if you will. And then we go all the way down um, to the $100 pewter level because that also, that is the whole reason for that is to give everyone a chance to participate. And typically in, in my, um, in the past, uh, when it was a, a lower level, um, what they received is just their name listed in the yearbook under whichever level they donated at. And that will be all they will receive. But some people, that's what, they're, they're, they're happy with that. So anyway, um, I know many of you have already seen this several times, but um, certainly new eyes, it's great to have new eyes. Um, so if you have any feedback, um, it's very welcome. And after this is accepted, well, we, we need to find someone who can make it look nice in some sort of a, I don't know, brochure or something. Some, it's, three page, it's a three-page document right now. So that's, I mean, it's almost. Uh, it's, it's almost two, but. I think Mike said his wife was a graphic artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but she can help me some. Um, I could definitely, working in events, she definitely has experience dealing with like sponsorship packages oh, and things oh, like that. Oh. So and also for the events that I work that I attempt for work, um, depending with the communication so we get advance. Like when we join different chapters, whatever. But I can kind of see what they use and kind of piggyback off of that. Um, so yeah, I could play with that, probably can help out on handout. Yeah. Um, and then also that would probably help for the website. So we were talking oh, about so we're yeah. right now we well, we'll get to that later, but um, yeah, we can print it up so that it's not you know, right. We're gonna right. Right. we're gonna need a graphic usually and that would be our logo, but we haven't decided about that. So that's another thing. I don't know. We'll have to maybe we'll see <laughs> there will be a placeholder um, logo for to forthcoming, whatever. Anyway, um, so that's great. You will you ask her if she Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see her tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, because I've been worried about that and that's huge because yeah. um, <laughs> Because then we can, you know, have it in a PDF and right. and send it to people and, and look professional. So before before we start worrying about packaging it though, I yeah. guess we're just this is where I get lost in the weeds here. So we're assuming that these are the right sponsorship levels and then it's gonna find what we really need, right? So is it we just move forward and figure it out or how do we how much time do we spend? Do we have enough twenty five thousand dollar level sponsors or opportunities I guess we yeah, just to suggest, it seems to me, you know, to move the ball forward, that maybe we make a decision today with respect to the sponsorship levels. You're pointing at me. No, I'm coming in. I need to listen to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you. Thank you. There you go. I'm trying. I can't. You know what I was going to suggest is. Would it be helpful for you if we voted tonight to agree on the sponsorship levels without getting into the weeds, but just to, you've broken it down with Premier 25,000 community and so forth, and, and agree on that for this evening in order to move the ball forward. Would that be helpful? So yes. Right. And, and then 
I mean, I think we can always fill in the details a little more later in terms of what is involved at each level, but at least for tonight, is it helpful just to break down the, the overall sponsorship levels? Yes, and to answer, I'm not sure where the question came from, maybe it was Ken, but we, some of them, we do feel like some of the levels are a little padded. So, um, for, I mean, but the amount, the, the, the amount of money that we're gonna seek may be padded for what the item is, the event is, per se. But, Michelle, I wish she was here, she said, you know, well, for the picnic, I'd like to give everyone a blanket. And I'd like, she has a lot of different things that she, and so what's good, though, is that we can get, add, or take away. Um, we'll still be, we should, you know, still be in good shape um, and be able to finagle things, I guess, if you will. Right, so for, for tonight, what I was going to suggest is, if I were to make a motion, basically reading from your sheet from the different levels, the one question being, there's community sponsors that a different amount than the other amount next to that. Um, is that that's just a subset? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're either premier or the community. Yeah, it's that's just explaining. That's okay. a category. So maybe what we can do for you, you make one. a motion for what you suggest the sponsorship levels to be. And I don't know if anybody else has any discussion, but it just seems like it's just moving the ball forward. Yeah. So, I, oh, wait, but. Well, we have some discussion. Sorry, yeah, yes. Oh, Diane has a question. I do have a question. Yes. Um, as to the names of the um, sponsorships, the only one that's, is Langwater Farm um, a private business, owned by a business, or is it part of, do you know what I'm saying? These are all What you're Tom, really asking is, is that name copyrighted? Well, or no. Or the or the or the it's 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 it. It. We got to have permission to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we might want to change. Well, it's, but it's also the word Bob. Because Lane Water. Because I was thinking about cows and just the Lane Water. So if I can have your attention, why don't we just have one person at a time speaking? If you just throw your hand up, I can call on you. Go ahead, Ken. I know, I was just saying that what Jeanette just said, I, I was saying that Langwater Farm, we may have to get permission from them to use that you know, as a title. But Jeanette suggested that we just drop the name, the word farm, and I think that, that makes sense. sense. Yeah. And we don't have to get any permission. Unless the names is a check, and I thought that's good. <laughs> Everybody agree with that? Yeah, I do okay. have a question though. Yeah. So Courtney, in your professional background, this is where you came up with this, right? Did you, I, you, you came up with this? Um, I came based on working with Michelle and where she thought we should. Mm -hmm. And with your professional and, background and, and fundraising, this yes. all this all clicks. And, it, and yes, all. and I thought that this is a, I think that it's a safe level. Okay. Like say for me, I guess. Because mm -hmm. I, I look at something like this and I don't know what's appropriate, what's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. I don't have that background. I know you do. So to hear that you're you're looking at this and you're saying, yeah, this is in my industry, this is the norm. Just wanted to make sure. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question and, oh, to Courtney. Just one. Courtney, finish. The Gloucester 400 website is what a lot of what I did base things off of. So um, if you wanted to peruse that mm -hmm. website, because uh, we we had to do a lot of liberating as. Just like how he, you know, he's working with Walpole um, for their, to learn from them. I was looking at other websites to see what they were doing. So, and then I proposed those levels. And so I guess, so I just want to say, there could be, in my professional experience, just to make sure I'm covering you, the, the real answer is that we could go higher, but mm -hmm. I, and have a big one big or two big 50s. And that would be easier even for me. But it wouldn't give as many businesses the opportunities in this does. Mm -hmm. My question, uh, for you, and then we'll go to Ken. Uh, under the scholarship category, is it just uh, all of our aims? Does it include the Southeast Regional Vocational? I believe it does include the regional. She was thinking both. Any other questions about the document? Go ahead, Ken. Uh, I was just going to address a couple of things. Um, having had a lot of experience as chair of the Stone and Landing Fund for about 12 years, I can tell you that 
What Courtney has done here in terms of categories, as Dale was just suggesting, is fine. Well, frankly, I think there's too much detail in here, but that just is an editorial process. The second thing that I would say is that tying scholarships into this at this particular point uh, is kind of a diffusion. I'm not sure that that's a good idea at this moment. We can always give, if you have money left over, for example, you can always give a scholarship. To, for example, on the Historical Society every year, we try to give out a $500 scholarship to uh, graduating seniors who have either helped out as volunteers or evidence and interest or something along those lines. I just think you, if you're talking about fundraising, you're fundraising for one thing or you're fundraising for another. And I don't think you should combine those two. I'm not saying the scholarships aren't a good thing. I'm just saying they can be, if there was a town gift mentioned earlier. If there's money left over, or if somebody wants to do that later on, that can be done. So that was my thought on, on this, just to confirm. I think, I think it's, and I, and I agree with Courtney, Better to have eight opportunities for 25,000 than trying to be just go two opportunities effectively at 100 or four opportunities at 50. I think, I think that's an easier, you know, nothing's easy, but it's easier to do it that way. Any other comments about the scholarship? I agree with Ken. I agree with Ken. What's that? Ken, do you want to make a motion that it be separate? Oh, he dances too. I'm, I'm trying to sell Dale, and now I'm learning new things about him. Okay. Um. <laughs> You're being televised here. <laughs> We're going to have a male auction. Oh, Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> So in terms of fine-tuning what's in here, the one concern I have is like, not a concern, I guess, if you, if eight people tomorrow sign up for the $25,000 sponsorship level, that means you just sold 80 seats at the gala. So for the event to already start kind of building its capacity level, I think we need to kind of set the levels, but there, I think there has to be some conversation about what that entails. Because when you get to the point of doing your gala, so like the one we do for a couple of our hospitals, it's 10 grand to buy a table for 10, right? But that's based on how many tables they have, and I don't think we even know where we're having the event or how many seats and all that kind of stuff. So some of this has to, before we put anything to, out to the printing press or onto the website, I definitely want to have a conversation about that. But I think tonight we can definitely set the levels, so to speak. Um, so that, I'm just throwing that out there. Because I don't want to overcommit or undercommit to the, the people that are that generous, but also don't want to back us into a corner and look for and get the actual staging of the events and how many seats do we have all there. We're already, we're already sold out. Go ahead, Dale. Yeah, my suggestion is we leave all of the details for a later date. So I'd like to make a motion in connection with just the levels and even leave the naming of those some of those other um, community sponsors for a later date just so we can move along to so have the basic structure. So my motion will be as follows, that we approve setting the following sponsorship levels a premier sponsor for $25,000, and then we'll have a series of community sponsors in the following amounts, $15,000, $10,000, $5,000, $2,500, and $1,000. That, that's my motion. We have a second. Second. We have a second. Mike Wood. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Okay. Dale made the motion, and Mike uh, seconded. Are we voting members? We haven't been sworn in, no. so I, no. Didn't, no. I, didn't, I didn't vote. But you're noting. But I'm we're, we're, we're looking your way because we want you to document it. Yes. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so for Courtney, before we move on, what is your desired timing for purposes of how you would like decisions that this committee needs to make in order for you to do what you want to do? And I was like, when are you ready to kind of go public with seeking of, um, sponsorships and so forth? So my plan would be to follow up with Mike and Ken um, and have the next draft ready for in two weeks for our next meeting so that we can get it to Mike's 
one to the end. Maybe she can be brought and start to play around with the things. But so, so we can get it because I do. Uh, we would we would like to approach, for example, the banks. Um, Dave has been chomping at the bit um, to get to solicit. So really, as soon as we can. So, but sometime like early this fall, so they can get off and running. That would be great. So the latest, yeah. Because we got people out there that have been approached that uh, are willing to uh, contribute to the celebration. I'm not saying that they're going to sponsor, but to, uh, we're I'm anxious to see that happen. And Mike, you're hoping your wife's not watching TV tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the baby just got home. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I can start putting together kind of like what it would look like, and then we can just fill in the template nail down the names and what the actual major bullet points we want to include in the materials going out. Yeah, you can do that ahead of the next meeting. Sure. Yeah, we've also agreed as a group that uh, the scholarship wouldn't be part of what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. That would be separate. Yeah. Any other questions regarding uh, Courtney's uh, part of the agenda? I think we're all set then. So uh, uh, I'll go over the motion with you, Diane, to make sure that uh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on now to Mike Good. Mike, of course, uh, has uh, got some things that he'd like to discuss with us tonight, uh, according to your email, Mike. Yep. So basically three things. The website, <coughs> we've made some updates if you haven't gone on it. Please do. Um, the events calendar is now populated with the eight you know, Keystone events that we're having. We've added a little bit of a sponsorship blur, or I think that went out today, just letting people know that we're going to be seeking that and that if they're if they want to reach out to Courtney, and then obviously we'll fancy that up a little bit as we go forward. Um, I want to reach out, so that's kind of what's going on with the site now. So as we develop more material and more updates, we'll start. Um, populating the site. Uh, beyond that, what I wanted to do is I'll put something together and send it out to the committee. Uh, but I think that town crier uh, email that goes out, I think mm -hmm. it might be time to start putting some blurbs out there or at least make some type of announcement in one of the upcoming emails that goes out that the tricentennial is coming up, that we're going to be seeking volunteers and donations and that there's a website. It would be something very basic, but again, that's how I found my way to the committee. So do read it, so that would be something we think of. Just one thing, um, when noting the, when, when submitting for the town crier, I keep having people ask me what the date of the tricentennial is, so I think it's very important for all of us to stress that it's a year-long celebration, because even when I'm posting this, there it's not coming through to everyone. Right? Somehow it's just not on the push. So, we need to just stress that mm -hmm. in our marketing materials. Yep. So it, you know, spanning from one one through twelve thirty one. So you know, oh, we'll put yeah. <clears throat> So we'll put something. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'll send something out before the next meeting to get everyone's approval or thoughts, and not to overthink it. But that's the uh, that's one thing there. And then the last thing I had was we had our conversation about the logo contest, which seems to be the thing that's going to get this whole ball rolling here. We had a little bit of a holdup, a snafu on who owns the clock, what's going on with the clock. So, do we have any update on the clock? Yeah, the town owns the clock. Oh, that's good. All right. Here's your update. All right. <laughs> so, trust me, it wasn't easy to find <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> so, then that leaves us with going. So, we have our contest. I don't have the outline with me because we collected it at the house, but you know, the idea being, again, we can confirm it at the next meeting or via email and then. Put it to motion, but we're going to have a contest following up using the clock as kind of the inspiration, designing a logo. Um, we want to have that by October, I believe, the deadline is, and I don't know if it's in the minutes, but so to allow for the school kids to participate, get the submissions in the fall, have our meeting around, I think it was October, November, to vote on it, and that would give us our logo moving forward into 2024. Right, yes. And then from there, we could add it to the website and then start putting on our outbound materials. So I guess that's the update for the contest. Is there any concerns? 
Any questions uh, anybody has for Mike? I know one of the action items that we had at the last meeting was to find out whether or not the logo uh, of the clock, uh, do we have to have uh, permission? I don't know if it was you, Ken. It was me, and I, and I said it depended upon who owned it, and the town owns the clock. So if we need any permission, I think we have a select person who might be able to ask. I don't see that being a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> so that's uh, being considered. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, so I'm just I'm bringing up the details. So I have the, the decent prepares to celebrate its 300th anniversary. A contest is being held to help with the creation of the official tricentennial logo, this logo. Contest is being held as an opportunity for Easton residents to participate directly in the local creation process. Following the, following the guidelines outlined below, participants will submit an entry for consideration by the panel of judges. The winning logo will then be used, but not limited to, on the Easton 300 website, banners displayed throughout the town, and a variety of other promotional items and materials throughout the celebration culminating in December 2025. All entries must be received by October 31st, 2023. The selection of the submission will be made at the Tricentennial Committee meeting held in November, in November 2023. And then we have these, these were the parameters. Every entry must include in some form the clock. Every entry must be black and white. Uh, submit entries, we need a mailing address for that part. Uh, we were asking for it to be a JPEG, no smaller than 500 kilobytes, no larger than three megabytes. Winning entry becomes property of the town of Easton. All entries, Will, no entries will be returned. All entries must include the designer's name, address, and phone number, and we were not going to have a um, entry fee. But then that, that's where we kind of dovetailed into we have a prize for the winner, which I, I said right and right. Bag of swag or something. Yes, and that's where we left off. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the, is, the, is, the too, is the time frame too long? Is October 31st too late to have a logo? Should we have one sooner? I don't know. Well, we don't have our shit. We're going to have kids involved in that back in school. And all oh, I wouldn't so. think so. No, I think that's it's October, I mean, that's only three months away. And then you still have 14 months before 2025 yeah. yeah. to use it, to promote it. You can't have a contest and have a certain winner and they create the art in less than two months. Go ahead, Diane. Question. Uh, you mentioned Eastern residents. Yes. But then you said 12 and up. Yep. 12 to, to Just do, is this strictly? No, it's going to be 12. 12 to in, infinity. In, okay. Like okay. Okay. In the town. okay, so it's not students 12 and no, up. No, we any want resident to of the right. town yeah. 12 and right. up. Right, residents 12 and up. But the residents, reason we were holding yeah. off on announcing it, several reasons, but part of the delay was that we wanted, we figured with vacations and everything, to sure. get the word out to the kids, it would probably be best for them to be back in school. And I'm sure they have other things to deal with the first few days besides the Tricentennial logo contest. So <laughs> that gives them September, October, gives us some time. So I guess my question is, outside of the bag of swag, and you know, we can put something like there will be a prize, a prize to be announced, something like that. Where, do, how do we get this kind of like approved so that we can put something on the website to kind of start getting communication on it? Do we have to make a motion to have a contest? Or? I would. I would think, uh, I think we did. Is that yeah. the way we started out with a motion? And then, so these parameters, though, like the rules. So you want to have a prize? Is that? What no, no. Saying? I guess what I'm asking is, is it okay with that, basically everything I just read through? If that is yes. the shell that goes up on the website, yeah. that's okay. Okay. All right. I just want to say that uh, talking with some other communities, the logo is always the first thing that they do, so that they can use it during the three years that they're planning and preparing. I say to our group, because we don't have it and we're going to involve the students so that we can get the word out, that live with it. And uh, let's not hold up uh, doing some things that we'd like to do. i give you an example. We're doing that TV show. We're calling it Eastern 300. We don't have the logo uh, to brag about or to talk about yet. Um, I have some hats that I personally bought uh, for the committee. 20 hats that have uh, Eastern 300 with the uh, Eastern colors. And on the back of it, it says Tricentennial 
2025, which we'll get at the next uh, meeting. And I ask you to wear it to help promote our celebration. Now that's a perfect example. We don't have the logo, but we come up with something that says Eastern 300. And I don't think anyone's gonna say to you, did you get the logo? <laughs> No. The fact is that uh, we'll live with it. Go ahead, Ken. What I was going to say is, you know, I think at the moment, since the clock is owned by the town, you just use any picture of the clock in terms of a TV program or anything else up until you have the final logo sure. done. Because since the logo is going to have to incorporate the clock, I don't see any reason why you can't have the clock Photographs. And there's any number of photographs floating around of the clock. I use it in my mailing when I send stuff out to you folks. And there you go. And I just uh, use it until we get a logo. And that's exactly what you're saying. That's exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. Just use a photo now and just make sure we're not using somebody else's copyrighted photo. Well, that's, so if you've got a photograph of your own, well, yeah. just take one. Yeah. Right? Somebody else can walk by and take one. <laughs> just kind of, just kind of, just kind of over here, man, taking a picture of him. Yeah, you may probably have one. <laughs> you have, you already have oh, a yeah. clock. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there is somebody out there with yes. a photograph. The, the, it's the picture that Dave's been using that he probably shouldn't be using. Because right. <laughs> he, he told us he wanted to be compensated. I've been playing them down, I just use it, but uh, I'm trying to tell him he's getting close. Yeah. It's not celebration. Not so much uh, the clock. I'll take a picture of it. Take a picture yourself. Yeah. Yeah, if anybody else has any other pictures that they've taken yeah, themselves, it's only just his send photograph. It's only right, his it's right, it's right. Copyright. So it's that right. doesn't mean you can't have 500 others. Right. Just make sure you don't use the one with me in it. That's okay. Okay, we're going to go to Mark Lamb, our select board member uh, on the logistics. Uh, I know that that's been a committee you've been on one of 17. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I already knocked through a lot. Uh, there's nothing uh, that we need permits for now at the moment, so that is, I don't see that picking up for a while. There's nothing to report. Any other reports that anybody has? Um, I'd like to uh, go around the table a little bit and uh, get the a reaction from all of our members, even if you're a new member. Uh, you're on the uh, celebration committee. We've got a lot of planning to do. Maybe uh, some of you have a suggestion or something that we should put on the agenda. Or maybe you have something uh, that you might want to say about Portland State Park in terms of them participating. I know that we got two things on hold right now that I wanted to mention before I go to Dale. That uh, Father John at Stonehill uh, is looking at the possibility of a site to have our anniversary uh, gala ball. And uh, we're going to be communicating with him uh, shortly uh, to uh, find out, I think he uh, he seems like he wants to do what he can to support our group and to, of course, support the town of Easton. So that's something that uh, we're looking forward to. Uh, the DPW uh, director uh, was looking at uh, signs at Stonehill College on the light poles. I'm talking banners. They were small banners. He originally wasn't in favor of us putting large banners on the small leak, uh, light poles on Main Street in Easton. So um, he uh, has been over to Stonehill to look at it, and I, I think he's going to go along with it. But it's something that uh, we can't do until we have a logo uh, to put on the banner. And it's going to be something, uh, Courtney, that you can use in terms of payback uh, to the people who sponsor. I saw that you had stuff in there. And also, Mike Good, about uh, doing signs and trying to take advantage of uh, uh, the school we have in our own community, Southeast Regional Vocational. So I'm going to pass it to you, Dale. Uh, this is a chance for everybody to uh, 
uh, put their two cents worth in as we uh, continue to plan and prepare, and even some new people. Go ahead, Ken. Just one before Dale. I yeah. just want to make one point on the clock. The clock is damaged right now, so it's uh, should be replaced. Should be repaired this week or next week. The glass uh, face of it that's facing Oak Sam's Hall uh, has been cracked at the top, and there's a lot of compensation. And so I'm not sure when they're going to get in to do it. I was talking to somebody from the DPW Friday morning, and he said he thought they'd get in there this week and get the clock people in. If not this week, next. So if we're going to take a picture of it. Make sure you take it beside the face yeah. and down to its <laughs> hands. Okay, Dale. This is an opportunity for you to speak. You don't have to make a motion on this. Yeah. I, I, I never pass up opportunities to speak as you know, but you know, I'm very excited about the whole thing, and just given the amount of work, which I think is an extraordinary amount of work, I think my overarching principle with this thing is we need to get as many folks involved to helping out a lot of the legwork and really try to make this a community event and you know, not a top down. So, as much as we can, reaching out to those other organizations and so forth and getting folks on board and help move the ball forward. So, that's something I'm trying to do in connection with the community liaison component of what I'm responsible for. Chris? Yeah, actually, I had a quick question. How are the photos going to be archived? Like, has any thought been, been put into, like, different um, details? Like that? I was thinking myself, the Historical Society uh, would be the uh, caregiver or carekeeper of, uh, of the anniversary book, which would go on sale to residents of the town. Okay. And the pictures that uh, uh, photographers uh, give us, we go into the, you know, you look at the previous anniversary books, all the department heads are in it. And that's something that should be there because when people look at this book, they're gonna say, I wonder who the superintendent of schools was uh, back then, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot to put in there. And uh, you have an important role. And I think that's why your dad recommended you uh, very strongly that you have the energy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and actually another quick question was in regards to the book, um, is it being designed, like is there, is it being designed by a, a company or is that more so part of like committee work? Like is, is there someone? It's going to start out as committee work and uh, we're going to put a committee together that uh, would enjoy doing that and putting it together like all of the other anniversary books. Yeah, because I'd love to be, you know, um, have the opportunity to do something like that. Chris, have you seen the prior books? I have not. We should get you a couple so you can see okay. exactly what they are. Um, just as a quick question, I know I gave books out to people here on the committee. Does everybody on the committee have them? I do. I, yeah. I know the 275th, I think, is the one that I had. I have a 250th, but I only have one. I don't have, I don't have the 275. Yeah. Okay. You, gave, you gave me 250. 250, I'm sorry. You're right, Jim. That was the one I had. And I was so I've got one or two seven. Oh, okay. So, Mark, you said you don't have I one. I do not. All right, I'll, I'll drop one off at the time. I'll say it goodbye there tomorrow. I'm sure. Great, okay. thank you. Can I, uh, what do you get the book? I've been looking at <laughs> one. I got one out in the car. I'm going to give no, I this one. Okay, now you, know, you could give it to me. Give one. One. You know what? You could either give it to Chris or give it to Mark. Either one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Then I'll get you another one. So, Chris, right now, the only person on that committee is you. Okay. So we're going to put that committee together. We just uh, bounced it past this board tonight. But that's a definite committee that uh, we can't eliminate. Uh, we've got to make sure that they plan and prepare and take. I even uh, suggested a writer, someone that can put it together. We'll go to our treasurer. Um, I just kind of wanted to echo what, what Dale said, that it's really important for the community to get involved and feel like they can volunteer with us because this is a, a huge undertaking that would be impossible for this group to, to accomplish. So we need sort of an all hands on deck kind of approach. And you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talent in this community that we could hopefully, um, people would feel good about volunteering their time to help us in whatever needs that we have. If I may just add toward that end, I think it's important that the sort of subcommittee chairs do that reaching out to other folks. So, for example, you know, for the, um, uh, for the anniversary book, you know, reaching out to folks that you think would be uh, particular skills to help out on that, and you know, can reach out as much as we can to get folks to actually help move the ball forward. 
We remind the people out there that are watching this meeting on ECAT that we are looking for volunteers. There may be folks out there that would like to donate to the cause or maybe sponsor uh, one of our major events, which would be uh, our signature events. Go ahead, Diane. I know you've watched this committee uh, on ECAT. Maybe not every yeah. month we met, but... Uh, I have watched yeah. the meeting. Thank you for having me. This will be fun. Um, and I remember the 250th. My kids were really little at the time, and it was super. Yeah, so I'd love to see that book. I don't think I ever have. I, I have them electronically, have? so okay, we can put them electronically. Yeah, we sure good. Everybody on the committee is going to show you how to do Yeah, that'd be great, Corey. Yeah, I, don't have, I don't have them. Oh, maybe it was sent around before you had joined the committee, but. But we'll, email we can send them to everyone. Yeah. Um, I so it was, it was fun 50 years ago, and this will be great. Great. Do what I can. <laughs> David, Rosalind? Go ahead, Rosalind. Oh, I'm just, there is, it looks overwhelming for all that has to be done. Yeah. But I'm very excited because yeah. I've never been involved in anything like this. I grew up in the city. We, we know. So I'm looking forward to helping and to see it all come together. Well, we appreciate you folks uh, joining that committee. And I know that uh, there is a vacancy. I think <coughs> Diane has filled out a volunteer form. Uh, the select board will uh, have to make that decision. And uh, we'll go to you, Paul. Yeah, you guys are doing an amazing job, very organized, planning in advance. Um, I represent Borderland State Park, and we're excited to host the Classic Car Show in October of that year. Um, I'm willing to help out however you guys need. Um, my suggestion, I guess suggestion would be, you guys are talking about promotional, getting people from the bottom up to really start helping out, get involved. A great way to do that, I think, is you're doing these TV shows of these uh, Eastern 300 series. Why not make a commercial and videotape everyday people of Easton? Use one word or two words that, why, what does Easton mean to you? Just a quick little commercial, really cute, put it on social media, and you're giving them that sense of place, and maybe they'll come and volunteer. So I would say, call it like Faces of Easton, or Faces and Places of Easton, and quick little 30 second sound bites, you know? That's a great idea. That's a, great idea. Love that. That's a very good idea. I'm not surprised, Paul, that you would come up with it. <laughs> I introduced you as Mr. Creativity. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our, our committee. Awesome, thank you. And uh, give some thought when you go home. Yep, I'm going to. All the different things that you would like to see happen. I have a list, but I'll, yeah, I'll email you, <laughs> email you Dave. Don't call me tonight at 10, you know. <laughs> go ahead, Courtney. <laughs> It always passed. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's an option. It's going to pass too because we must have been talking. No, we weren't talking. No. <laughs> I was listening. I was paying attention. <laughs> Maybe the only time I was ever paying attention. But that Actually, did you yeah. say wake up, Ken? That's <laughs> it. No, I wasn't sleeping. Maybe it was. Actually, I got a quick question. Dale, on the uh, community outreach, are you dealing, going to deal with all the various non-profit organizations? Yeah, my intent is to reach out to all of them, and so the idea is with you know, the website coming to fruition and having something to point them to, and I want to reach out in a couple of ways, one of which is... You answered my question. Well, that's yes. not going on. <laughs> you answered my question because I just to and, and also personally reaching out. Yeah. Yes. I just didn't want to, if, if I'm doing businesses, I didn't want to overlap. I just made them right. So you check. Thank you. I'm going to pass. Go ahead. <laughs> Mike? Pass. Oh, you pass, okay. <laughs> well, I don't think I have to go, seeing that I'm the last one. The last one. No, I need the same thing with what Dale had mentioned. There's, a, there's a, a lot of moving parts and a lot of committees, a lot of people. If you extrapolate 17 committees out, um, you know, you're looking at dozens and dozens of people, and then the volunteers on top of that, you're looking to touch hundreds of people participate in the creation of this. So um, it's, a, it's a mammoth task, and um, I think 
getting the word out in those various formats, what you said, getting the logo square away, um, so these people can can become knowledgeable of what is going on and, and wanting to participate. And also what you had mentioned too, Dale, you know, I don't, if people feel there's, there will be sort of a hierarchy, but if people feel there's a hierarchy, they need, you know, they have to sit before a board to get their ideas sold, they're gonna be like, I'm, I'm out of here. You know, I, I, I'm not feeling this welcomeness and this collaboration. So I think it's important that anybody who does come in, um, you know, they, they, their voice is heard and, and they're appreciated, which of course it would be, but um, I think it's an important element. Just if I may, what I was anticipating is that, um, you know, the subcommittee folks get those people to run, run the ball, and then it's the subcommittee chair is responsible for reporting back to the board. This is what's going on, and if you feel that they need approval or something, seek that approval. But I don't think we want to be putting too many constraints on folks jumping in and moving the ball forward. Yeah, you push them away. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And we can't afford to. Right. Well, it's the same thing with uh, the coordinators of the eight uh, signature events that we approved. Uh, their coordinators are going to be coming to our meetings. And uh, just take the parade committee, for instance. It takes 30, maybe 40 people to make and pull the parade off. And the chair of that, which is Corey, he's going to come to the meeting. He's going to recommend uh, what's going to be in the parade, what the parade route is, where uh, they may have the review stand. Uh, we've already talked about it. He's thinking about in front of DPW uh, so that the dignitaries would be on the review stand as the parade passes by. Uh, so the route, all that stuff, the bands, I don't see us as a committee uh, jumping in and saying, I don't think you should have that band. I think you should have a common bureau corps. The floats, all that stuff is going to be presented. That's the advisory committee that's advising us as a board. Uh, but anyways, that's just an example, and there's going to be uh, other committees as well. So if you know volunteers that you think uh, should be part of this, talk to them and uh, see if you can get them involved. Uh, we've got a wide variety of activities. And one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to take all of the ongoing events that are yearly events that have taken place could be something like the Halloween parade. And it's all going to be part of our schedule. We want to communicate with those people and let them know it's our anniversary year. And maybe there's something that they might want to add to the event that they're doing to kind of spice it up a little bit. Um, those are suggestions we're going to make. They're not demands. And uh, it's all part of the celebration. And it's a little thing like going to the schools and the superintendent says, uh, how about if we put 300 patches uh, with the 300 on it on all the athletic programs in the school? And Southeast Regional may do the same thing. So the whole town's gonna get involved in it. And down the road, very, very in the very near future, we're gonna find ways to involve the young people outside of the logo and how we're going to involve the senior adults to the council and aging. So that the senior population of the town also participates in the celebration. Uh, I have a document that uh, I was supposed to present as an action item uh, from what happened in another community and what were the responsibilities and roles. I'm not going to uh, go through all that tonight uh, as time goes by. Yeah. And I know Mike's had to leave early. But uh, the person who has the file uh, unfortunately passed away. So uh, it's been difficult for me to get the file, but I made my own up. And he happened to be a member of the Board of Selectmen in that town. And uh, he uh, co chaired the event with me. And we had the roles of responsibility for every uh, member of the committee. Just wanted to say, Mark, I looked up the committees and uh, they had 17. <laughs> uh, and a lot of the 17 were coordinators of all the events. So we kind of saw them separate, mm -hmm. the coordinators of the major events. When we put the schedule together, if you don't have one, I have one here for you. 
that shows all the events for the year. The only ones that we get involved in paying for are the ones that are the uh, signature events. Everybody else that's been doing their events over the years, they sponsor their own events. They participate, but they join the bandwagon for a 300th anniversary. I'm going to call for a motion to adjourn, and before I do that, I would like to look at the camera and say, folks out there that may be watching, watching, uh, we're looking for many volunteers as we uh, celebrate the 300th anniversary of the town of Easton. So folks, uh, if you're interested, uh, give me a call. Uh, I'll give you my telephone number, 781-690-3476. I repeat that, 781-690-3476. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> so moved. Uh, do we have a second by Courtney? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you very much, uh, ECAT, Eastern Community Access Television. See you at the next meeting, August 9th.